Live from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another fantastic Ask an Engineer show. We're broadcasting live from downtown Manhattan, the Adafruit Secret Headquarters. Dun, dun, dun. I'm Lady Ada, the engineer. With me is Becky, the Becky hey. Stern. <laughs> uh, we also have Adabot. Hello, how's it going? Adabot's left elbow. Yeah. He's on camera control. <laughs> Becky's hanging out with us, drinking a beer, chillaxing. Yeah. Any yeah. time. We have all sorts of fun stuff on the show. We're broadcasting in HD now, right? Yeah, we're broadcasting in HD, and uh, you guys probably out there notice we're getting a little space constraint. Adafruit will be upgrading our office soon. We're in the shipping department area. Yeah, we also... went and saw spaces all this week. Yeah, yeah, so Adafruit will be getting about 10,000 square feet or more um, with lots of options to grow soon. We are we are bursting at the seams here. So we're all, we're all friendly. It's like... Get real yeah. close. So Get anyways. real close, everybody. We're being uh, packages. Yeah. Yeah. We're all filled with packages. Um, all right. Pat likes it. Wanna 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 get this going on? Oh yeah. What's on tonight's show? Okay. Bye. On tonight's show, we're gonna talk about the show and tell. We have some news items, badge program, things going on with the Internet of Things printer, stuff from Thingiverse, checking in with Ask an Educator, an anniversary of all sorts. Kind of fun. Another open source upgrade for the Kubro. Flickr Friday. A little article we're going to discuss. John Janiers, what he does. New categories on the Adafruit blog. Circle Playground has an app. Update. New product section. Lots of new products from Lull Shield to new LEDs to uh, these. I say I, I think they're brass knuckles, but they're actually another they're part. terminal blocks. They're terminal blocks. To snap circuits to little bits to. Slip rings to this awesome new GPS that everyone's gonna really love. Um, do we have a? It's not out yet. Oh yeah, maybe I'll, I'll grab it. You have to grab that later. I'll grab that. I forgot. All to. that. But I'll grab it and more. And a cat. On Ask an Engineer. Okay. That could go a little bit smoother sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I forget all the stuff we're doing. Oh, good. All right. Yeah, well, I mean, we were like, we worked really hard last week, so we're yeah, we're all tired. We're all tired. We've been working hard. Well, we had to run the sh run the shop as usual, put in all these new items, and of course, as we mentioned before, we are yeah. we are seeking out a new Adafruit headquarters. Yeah, and and Becky's been ramping up, um, learning everything we do here. So ultimately, one day you could just take over Adafruit. I'm so tired. Please take it over. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to go home. So Becky's learning every little piece of the business, which is fun. I can do stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, and we'll talk about actually some of the things that you're yeah, you're working yeah. on, some of the things that you're you're doing, um, in addition to what, running our wearables group. So you, you're busy. Yeah, busy. busy. Also tired. Yeah. Busy. Yeah. And you uh, also just set up your um, home video studio. Yeah, I got yeah. the new equipment. I set it up this morning. Yeah. Thanks. Um, equipment the, fairy. Yeah. <laughs> it, it about equipment fairy. I I, uh, I press the buy button. <laughs> my major job right now, and I enter in the secret code on the front that they make you do that. Anyways, um, tonight's. Uh, Code is Frogger, 10% off many things in the Adafruit store. That's Usually right. stuff we make. On Kit, checkout. Kits you, and breakout yeah, boards and use, stuff use that we make. Use Frogger. Use um, let's talk about the show and tell. Another awesome, massive show and tell. These show and tells are really, packed. Yeah, really, really, really huge good. show and tell. Yeah. We had, I have to remember everybody who showed up, huh? Yeah, um, the RGB uh, LED. We had Scott, yeah. Scott uh, 42 from Garland. Yeah, so he has this awesome holiday lighting, so if it's... Um, Pastel um, pink and yeah. blue for Easter. And then Ian stopped by with his um, uh, his Kickstarter project, yeah, the, the C. Yeah, Yeah. And can you, in, in one sentence, explain what it is? Because it's a very complicated thing. Yeah, it's thing kind for... of like an analog Swiss Army knife. It, it has a, a function Ooh, generator. Analog Swiss Army knife. It has an good. analog fr function generator, analog DC current voltage uh, generator, and then a, a basic oscilloscope, or, you know, whatever, um, analog digital converter. So you can... Do stuff like um, do like ne basic network analysis on like small analog circuits. So it's kind of fun. So you know, instead of just learning, oh, you know, this is what a low pass or a high pass or a band pass filter looks like, you can actually wire it up on a breadboard, connect this up, and it'll it'll actually do a uh, frequency sweep for you. So it's it's probably not high frequency. It's probably up to like maybe 10 or 100 kilohertz. But like. It, it kind of, it's sort of similar to a bus pirate, except instead of like for I2C, SPI, or, you know, digital, it's meant for analog circuitry. So it's still very handy. Good if you're, the problem with analog is you really do need to have an oscilloscope or function generator to understand it. If you can't generate all these different frequencies, you yeah. don't understand frequency response. And then, um, I'll skip a little bit. Uh, someone found a Heath kit 
oscilloscope. Steven mm -hmm. found one. Really cool. For free. It for awesome. free. It was in the free, not sure what it has been. Free. What the hell is this thing? Yeah. <laughs> usually it's their juicers. They're usually like just like a juice juice machine from the 70s yeah, or something like that. That's usually in the free bin. Extra bands. Um, and then there yeah. was uh, Ethan. He, had, he showed his high altitude balloon project. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which is only his first PCB. Yeah. Uh, he's one of the uh, young folks featured on the uh, badge site. We'll talk yep. a little bit about that. And then he had a quadcopter. Yeah, and a quadcopter. He's still working on it. And then um, there was, the last one was the um, laser. It was an Arduino with a, a laser um, spirograph. And then Michael uh, showed his project case. Yeah, it's him and case. And who else did we have? Is there another? I, I know we, I'm spacing on one. Anyways, the good news oh is, boy. as we're speaking, we have so many. it's, it's, it's so been many. encoded, it's in, it's encoding and going up to YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, we have YouTube in like a half an hour, yeah. so you yeah. can even watch it while you're watching the show. You can like double yeah. fist watch, ask and do Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you the thing about, I like about the show and tell is um, when, we, when, when Google had the Hangout thing as a feature, um, I said, oh, this is mm -hmm. awesome. I want to compete with Ask an Engineer. And I think it's it's working out. Like show and tell is kind of taking its on a, a life of its own. Does it have metrics? Can you tell how many people were watching it live? Um, Not right now, right? No, I don't think there's any metrics like that yet. So you yeah. don't really know if it's actually. I, yeah, but between. it's on YouTube immediately, so you can look at those. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah it's hard users. to tell. I mean, hmm, it's a good question. On YouTube, you get the number of views of course, later. But I'm just curious about but, live viewers yeah. to compare it to. Yeah. Google knows. It might be in somewhere in the bowel of Google. Yeah, and it also is all new and beta and weird. Yeah, yeah. So every so time you log in, it's experience. different. Every time I log in, there's a whole new set of features. Interface. So this time, like, we have a special interface because we have this live feature that Google turned on. Mm -hmm. And when we opened it up, there was, like, all these faces and everything. It looked like the Windows 7 interface. It was I, a I'm different. like, what's going on? Yeah. Just changing the interface. Face tiles going, yeah, it, it, it was cool. Anyways. Okay, that's show yeah, that's so, I have to too. remind people yeah, how, how, do they, show and how tell. How do they get on the show and tell? Uh, to sh to show, show up in the show and tell and show off your project, you have to be added to my show and tell circle, which is on my personal um, Lady Ada Google Plus page. So, yeah. show up at the Lady Ada page, not the Adafruit page, and find like a day or two ago link, yeah. a posting that says, hey, post here, respond to here if you want to get added to the circle, add to the circle, and then anytime in the future, you'll be able to join the show and tell. You can always watch yeah. it, but if you want to join. Yeah. Usually on Saturday we do a post that says if you want to be in the show and tell circle, post a comment on Lamore's page. Um, one day Google will probably have some automated way where all your Gmail contacts are added. Or Automatically. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> Google. Yeah. Okay, next up, some uh, cool things in the news. Uh, badge program was kind of announced, a digital version. Right. And the cool thing about that was it raised awareness um, for the idea for the idea of peer-to-peer uh, -peer learning and for parents to award badges to their kids. So this is like my, one of my favorite ones. So people are taking photos of their kids with the badge that they earned. So the test to get the soldering badge for um, these two young girls was to make a motor shield. So if nice. they can make a motor shield, they got the soldering thing and had to work and all that stuff. So this is fantastic. This is exactly what we wanted to see. This is the, the test is the kit and the badge they, the kids yeah. get at the end. And these two... Uh, Young girls are gonna be the ones that put Adafruit out of business one day. I hope. Yeah. Bring it on. This is like this is great. Yeah. Well, this is the best way to make engineers. So, um, imagine if like you were soldering at six or seven, right? Yeah, that would have been that would have right? been such a head start. When was the start. first time you started soldering? College. Yeah. So I, I mean, really start. I did like a little bit in high school. I mean, school these kids have cell phones already, and like, yeah. so it's like they're like it is kind of cool. It is a cool time to live. Mommy, in. I can control my robot with my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, it even looks like you know, Lamar get the glasses and everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think this is like young versions these of are, Becky and Lamar. These are really cute. Yeah, that is a little bit. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we're looking there, into, the, into the alternate isn't universe. Isn't the destination of all like um, like brands eventually they have like the baby version? So there's Muppets and then Muppet Babies. Yeah. I always thought it'd be cool to do Star Trek Academy. <laughs> I know. Never mind. Let's keep moving. Yeah, we, uh, went, we went to a weird place there. Okay, this was a fun project. This was in our Flickr pool. And yeah, that's where I saw it. People are getting the printers. And, and so this is um, somebody, I guess, they already had the printer that we had sold for uh, the thermal printer. And we recently put out the Internet of Things printer kit, which is basically the printer and enclosure and a button. And, you, you know, you put it with an Arduino and, like, you can have an Ethernet-connected printer. Um, yeah. But the source code, which Phil Burgess wrote, is just fantastic. So this yeah. person adapted it. And it's um, it's a cigar box with the printer and then and I guess the Ethernet Arduino or Arduino with Ethernet children, I don't remember. Yeah. And it prints out William Gibson's tweets. It's so cool. 
people are doing cool stuff. I thought it would have been cool if you put it in, a, in, a, in like a metal head. Yeah, it'll, that's what someone's gonna do. It's gonna come out of the mouth. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. A good one. So, yeah. Uh, you're working on a special video soon. We can't yeah. talk about it yet, but you have a fun video coming out. I totally did not understand the end of Neuromancer. I don't, I don't really understand yeah. what happened there. That was really weird. Someone wants to know where do you get cigar boxes? Hmm. Go to cigar shops, and they, um, they're yeah. throwing them out, and they're they're actually really fantastic uh, project boxes because they're easy machine. Yeah. They they smell really good. Yep. And they're really, they're, you know, you can latch them open and close. So go to a cigar shop. They'll always have cigar boxes. Or, or wait till high. Mark Fraunfelder on Make posts another cigar box project. Because he has an endless supply of cigar boxes. I don't know where he gets them from. But he's made, like, a million cigar box guitars. I used to find them in thrift stores a lot. Yeah. No, my sister used to collect them. She, she'd go to, yeah. there's a cigar shop. Mm-hmm. Well, not shop, but, like, they would, you know, they sold them. And they don't, they don't have a use for them. Yeah. Okay. Let's keep moving. Um, Becky, you were busy this week. You added all of the stuff go. on Thingiverse. Talk about this. What are you doing? What are you doing, What's Becky? What's going on? Well, I flashed out Thingiverse. The last thing you had on Thingiverse was the Spirograph business card. And since then, you made a lot more like laser cut uh, things, like the case for the monochrome clock and the case for the ice tube clock and the uh, Beagle Bone box and the Beagle Proto plate and the Internet of Things printer enclosure. So yeah. those are all... Um, Files to be shared, and they're on GitHub too. But now they're also on Thingiverse. I put them on GitHub and SVG. Yeah. I spent time and, and exported them to SVG, and then you know they don't have SVG raw. It doesn't do the right thing because you can you can see SVGs from within a browser. Yeah. Well, so Thingiverse says it just fine. I it. know, which is the thing. So I actually put in a bug feature request oh, to good. GitHub saying, hey. They'll probably listen to you. They like, like you over PDF, at GitHub. Like PDFs, they show up correctly into yeah. the GIFs and JPEGs and PNGs, but SVGs don't. They actually show up as raw text, which is cool, but still it would be more useful, I think, if they showed up. You could see the image. Sure, and on Thingiverse you can. It's so. scalable. That would be yeah. cool. So mm-hmm. if, if any of you guys work at GitHub, maybe push that up in the queue a little bit. Okay, and next. I can work Becky. Yeah, Ooh. and we'll continue to do that. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. We're just, we're, now that we have a Becky... Yeah. Got her. I have a Becky. Uh, we're Becky doing, likes during curation. We're doing so much better with the curation. Yeah. We're we're putting more yeah. products up on GitHub. We have over a hundred GitHub repos. Some of them are yeah. private, but when we hit a public a hundred public, we'll do a post. Yeah. We'll have a little cake with a like an count on it. And um, we're gonna idea. have more stuff on GitHub. We're gonna have more stuff on Thingiverse. More stuff on YouTube. More stuff yeah. in the Flickr photo pool. So Becky's like the yeah. She's got. Weave it all together. She's got the. I arms. like the internet. <laughs> She's yeah, the cheap. other the other thing that's really neat is on the bottom of every page on Adafruit.com is a little row of buttons, and there's a GitHub button. Yeah. So anytime you want to see anything that we do, it's always at the. And it's I think, always one click away. I think we will um, keep hosting all of our stuff on GitHub. There is yeah. ways to yeah. do to pull GitHub content into other pages, so we might. And we have an account, and I don't think we'll ever like get in GitHub Enterprise. Although, like, I could see why that would be really handy. Uh, but I really think it's. You know, there's no other way to do open source hardware right now. It is, if, you know, people are like, yeah. is there an open source hardware? Is there a GitHub of open source hardware? And I'm like, like yes. It's GitHub. It's called GitHub. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a bunch of um, startups that are um, doing similar things. But GitHub is just so good. It's so good. If they had yeah. visual diffs for the Eagle XML and SVG, uh, S- SVG visualization. Yeah, that's coming. Apparently that that's would coming. be like. Yeah, you'll be able to do visual diffs. And, I mean, Eagle 6 just came out, so I think that's going to be something cool. So you'll be able to see the board changes. That yeah, would that's be, cool. And Wendell that would be from, the bomb. Wendell from Evil Med Scientist Laboratories actually showed how you could do that. Like you could take yeah. PNGs b- between the two and like, anyways. Nice. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, but yeah. you can also do it. I think just with the XML because it's it's very easy. You could graph it. Yeah. yeah. That'd be a good project. Okay. Next up, uh, I'm just gonna go through these real quick. If you are someone who teaches electronics in any way or does workshops, you Educate have to check or. out um, Adam Kemp's Ask an Educator. People send him questions. He's a real teacher. And teaching, he answers them. Teaching, yeah, teaching kids, and he's, like, in the trenches. So this week he had, ask an educator, how do I make things move with an Arduino? Excellent post. And someone said, wow, finally someone gave all the ways that you would do something with an Arduino, from motors, like, how do you make something move? I also so, want to plug help. Making Things Move, yeah. which is a fantastic, fantastic book that has all this information and in even more depth. Next up. In case you're wondering about this one. Um, what's the difference between different types of diodes? Excellent things. Zener, yeah. shock key. And, and what's great is teachers are asking yeah. other teachers. So that's one of the that was right. one of the goals. Well, they all speak the same language. They teach speak they <laughs> teach they speak teachers. No, I mean well because yeah. he wrote back the response like here are all of the ways it's like broken down kind of like you would a curriculum like yeah. okay I'm gonna take this yeah. route and. And then the other one was uh, what undergraduate majors are covered by STEM and most interesting little factoid on this. 
the Department of Homeland Security has the like most comprehensive list of STEM majors. Who would have thought? Weird. So on their site, they're like, oh, here's STEM majors. Okay, cool. Like government, the Homeland Security site. I think it might be because like the way they do like visas or like they they keep track of all the STEM they stuff. Do. So anyways, there's a full list and you can see all of them. And Adam keeps doing an awesome job. Cool. Good work. Yeah. Adam. All right. Next up. Uh. In honor of today's code, yeah. or the code so, in honor of yeah, today's Yeah, uh, the code tonight, I guess we could take a code break. The code is Frogger. Frogger. 10% off. Many things in the different store. Um, so, this is an anniversary for two things. First one is, this is the 31st anniversary of Frogger. So, the video game Frogger. Okay. 31 years ago, it came I out. I love Frogger. Yeah. And the reason why we know it's 31 years ago is because this is a different type of anniversary. I met you for the first time in person at South by Southwest six years ago. So long ago. Yeah. And that was the 25th anniversary of, of Frogger. Yeah. And why do we talk about Frogger? Because uh, the first project we worked on together, and I have photos of it, was uh, Roomba Frogger. Um, we took uh, a, um, a Roomba and we dressed it up like a frog. Yeah, we and met and then we're like, okay, let's put a robot on track. Well, there's a little bit more than that. So I was uh, doing some talks at different make events. Mm -hmm. uh, make has kind of just got started at the time. And I had uh, hacked a Roomba to be controlled with via Bluetooth. And I was doing um, a Roomba cop fighting. So, like, instead of it being animals, it would be Roombas. And you'd have to push. It was like Sumo Bot. You'd have to push yeah, one no, off no, the edge. Yeah, on pool tables. Yeah, on pool tables. Because all the parties were always at bars. So it's like trying to introduce, like, robotics to, like, the, the web tech crowd. Who, yeah. This was when Make was just going. And so I was at South by Southwest. I invited you to come out because you were going to speak on a panel with me. I did. About electronics and, with Natalie. and about open source hardware. And one of the funny things about the panel was someone said, well, when are you going to be a real business? Right? Someone That's asked right. you that. When, oh, are you, when, when are you going to be a real business? And the answer is um, hopefully never. Yeah. We're never going to be a real business. Real business, <laughs> real business sounds like a drag. And we actually we will talk about that later. Um, so anyways, we, um, we decided to make this... Um, Cute little guy. Roomba Frogger thing. Meep meep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, here's us on the street controlling it. Um, this is uh, right before we started doing it. And then this, uh, there's a hotel called the Driscoll, and uh, these uh, virtual reality people had this awesome big suite. This was when Second Life was kind of in its peak, and there was a lot of virtual reality stuff, again, yeah. oddly enough. And uh, you can see this is us looking down. And the, the idea is to get Roomba Frogger across the highway, and this is not a highway, by the way. It's, it's Sixth Street. It's actually Sixth Street. If you've ever been to Austin South by Southwest, um, it's not. It's not. Uh, cars don't go more than five miles per hour, and the cars are not. Uh, it's basically where all the drunks are walking in the middle of the yeah. street. <laughs> so, um, anyways. Eating pizza. Anyways, um, this is a little frog. He's going across. You can see him. He's going. Meep, 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 meep. He's gone. Um, this is a, a little SUV, and the the there was a betting pool. How many times could the frog go back and forth before the frog is run over? And uh, most of the money was on just one, and uh, I got it across there ten times. Yeah. And then a and then an SUV ran it over and destroyed it. And uh, there it is. <laughs> so Aww. that was that was Roomba Frogger. That's a, that's a younger Adobot. Yeah. So that's me. Anyways, so that was our first project we ever did together. Aw, you guys. And, uh, and there was outrage from day one. <laughs> yeah, and uh, one of the things about this project is uh, we were accused of working for the uh, for an ad agency because this is all part of a viral <laughs> marketing thing for the 25th anniversary of Frogger. On that night, the Seinfeld rerun that was in syndication was the one where George Costanza has a as a, a Frogger game, and he's actually playing he's Frogger, trying to get the Frogger game across. Yeah. So everyone assumed that we coordinated all this stuff and. In my past life, I was in advertising, so people were like, oh, I Googled him, it must be part of all this stuff. So there's this giant art project to raise awareness for Frogger or something. This, is, this apparently was all coordinated. Okay. And we hired all these cars to Did go back and forth. you get a thank you letter from the Frogger people? Um, Roomba was very happy because it really spiked Roomba sales. Sure. We yeah. Got, uh, Great. Then the, so the, the Bluetooth Roomba They thought sales. it was all for Frogger, but it was really for Roomba. Yeah. So I don't know if any I don't know if any of that stuff is true. But one of the things I did say is I thought you were going to be on the cover of Wired one day. Look like that I, happened. I don't remember that. I also either. gave out the winning lottery numbers for that night. <laughs> so, uh, 14, 61. Oh. Yeah. So anyways. All right. So that's that's today's code is Frogger. That's why it's Frogger. Of this yeah. Board and we're, and, uh, and so uh, we did a talk at South by Southwest, and then we were invited to keynote the year, uh, one year later. Yeah. So that was fun. 
Have you been to South by Southwest? You have it. It is a little crazy this year. If you have an American Express card and you're invited, you can go see Jay Z at an exclusive party. I it do is, like Jay Z. It is completely I changed. Don't... The conference is completely changed. Multi million dollar it's, it's all... uh, confer- or, uh, concerts are there now. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, oh, really? It's no longer. Like, it's a big deal. It's, it's a big deal. Uh, yeah. It's a big deal. I don't like big crowds of people, but I do like. Some that Jay-Z. is South by Southwest in a nutshell. Yeah. All right, cool. So, okay. Next up. Um. Like Kubro, um, ah. Tyler uh, sent. Uh, well, you actually posted this on our site. So open he, source upgrade. Yeah, so we have this thing where we're trying to uh, celebrate open source upgrades. So this is the Kubro kit. We sell this. Tyler made it, and someone hacked this LCD that we made on it. OLED. Yeah, sorry. A very OLED. beautiful OLED, which is daylight readable, which is probably nice. really handy. So yes, yeah, outdoor. It's very small and lo- uh, very low power too. Oh, cool. Okay. Next up, Becky, you were doing a new feature. You want to talk about this? Uh, Flickr Pool Friday. <laughs> so we pick a photo from the Flickr Pool and put it up on Fridays. Flickr Pool Friday. I gotta get back into Part Finder Friday. I'm oh, just having actually, let me back up here. This is Stephanie. <laughs> this is Stephanie's project. Who's in the chat? By the oh, way. Oh, hi Stephanie. Good yeah. work, Stephanie. Awesome. Yeah. In fact, Stephanie, email supportadafruit.com. I'll send you out some stickers. She's got that. nice yeah. manicure going on. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. So this is the photo I picked for Flickr Pool Friday. It's okay. a sailing compass using your. Yeah, this what is now? the this is the ST seven five something something L C D. Mm-hmm. And uh It's in an otter box. It's, it's a nice graphic it's yeah, it's an otter it's inside an otter box which we also carry. It looks like it's in the three thousand or series probably. It's yeah. a really big otter box. And it's cool. handy because you can go sailing and it's completely waterproof and it floats. It'll also float. Yeah. Really, uh, lightweight. And, and Becky, tell everyone, how would they get their photos in the Flickr pool and featured on the Make blog of uh, the Aid Fruit blog? You put <laughs> your... <laughs> the make, actually, the Make blog, too. The words. Yeah. Actually, the Make blog, too. Yeah. We actually, your... I, I, I feature their stuff on our blog all the time. Yeah. When you want to see your photo in Flickr Pool Friday, you put your photos of your Aid of Fruits, meaning the, product, the projects you make in the pool and I'll pick one. They don't even have to be made with Adafruit stuff. Any project. Yeah. Any, electronic Any project. project that's cool, uh, put the photo in the Flickr pool and we'll see it automatically yeah. and we'll, uh, maybe we'll feature it. Alright, next up. Um, we'll just talk about this quickly. There's a really good article in the New York Times. You sent this to me and I posted it up on the site. It was all about how um, technology companies are the next thing that's not fun anymore. Like, airline, having an airplane, like, inventing an airplane used to be fun and then all these regulations and like, all this stuff. I think I think the article is it, it's a, it's pretty nuanced, and I think I I can't understand what he's talking about. I thought it was interesting in a couple different ways. Yeah. First up, I think that there's you know when people talk about startups and, and entrepreneurship and, and especially hardware, I think there's a lot of like romanticizing of like oh and like Hewlett and Packard and like the you know jo- like the Steve Steve's. Jobs, the Steve and Steve. Or, you know, even like Lotus, like, you know, all this, all this early hardware software, even like Microsoft, you know, it's, it's all very garage yeah. based hardware. And I think that, um, and so now there, just, there's a lot of, people would say a frothy market in, in software, web apps and stuff. And, um, well, you know, I follow it just because, you know, I have people who do it, so it's, it's good to be informed. But I do agree. I, I see what he's saying about it not... It, it's like tech companies, it's not fun. It's like, it's so cutthroat now. It's mm. so like, oh my God, we have to get funding. We have to secure like an angel round. We have to go and pitch. We have to pitch. We have to pitch. We have to do a tech startup. We have to do Y Combinator. We have to get on TechCrunch. We have to get on Panda. Yeah. We got to do I'll this. tell you what's not it's fun. Like they're not having fun. I'll tell you what's not fun. Now, the common thing is you are the product. Being on TechCrunch is pretty fun. Well, the common thing is you are the product. So like every week there's a new privacy thing. Every week you find out like another app is downloading your address book every week. It's just like, and just, it's, it's all about, it's all about can, violating can, your privacy. How and, can I turn people who are not paying me into uh, like product, like turn yeah. them into, get all yeah. the users and then like, you, you turn them, put them in a blender and then you yeah. feed it to like your, your what, is it, what, are, what are they, what is this, like, what is this head worth? Beowulf. And so, um, I think the coolest right. thing right now <laughs> is doing open source hardware and running a business. So yeah. So what's interesting is of all the people I know who are having the most fun, it's yes. us. <laughs> we're having tons of fun. Uh-huh. Like we're having fun. We build stuff, and like all the other hardware companies we know of are also having fun. I actually, yeah, sure. There are challenges, of course. There's challenges doing hardware, but um, like Brilliant MakerBot is having a really, really good time. All those MakerBot guys are like having, having a, a blast. Lot, yeah, a lot of fun. I think that um, 
DIY drones, 3D robotics, DIY drones, they're also like having fun. Tyler just started a company and has this, this open source hardware thing. What's great, I think, is you'll never hear about an open source uh, hardware product that stole your address book or like that's trying to figure out a way to monetize your interactions or like you just won't. You just won't. I mean, it's just like it's, we also, don't, it's fun. We don't have to worry about this stuff. Also, that's interesting is like a lot of the Kickstarters are for hardware. Like yep, the most popular the C, ones are. The, the fellow who showed the C analog, you know. Yeah. Like and it's really good because you can you can then fund out your first production and round and you have some, your first line of uh, beta testers or yeah. customers. And, and I agree that it's it's you know it's always tough with you know to ship goods and to test them and make jigs and you know source parts, but like. You know, it's still fun. It is it's fun. Hardware, if you've never done that stuff before, hardware it's fun. is fun in a way that yeah. software isn't. Yeah. Which I, well, which is, it's just so tough to explain to people. Stuff. Yeah, you're actually doing stuff, and also, you it's very difficult for one person to really do a full project in software. It, it it's really, it can really be like mind numbing, in my opinion. In software, you really need a lot of people, I think, to really get a good product that it's actually saleable because there's so many people doing software. With hardware, not that the bar is low, but it's just that there's not it. it there's more niche v- availability. Yeah. So you you know you can go in and do a very small thing and, and and do hardware and have a really good time and have a lot of very excited customers and that's kind of what we do and what I see a lot of other people do. Mm-hmm. And like you know you're doing wearables. That's also it's niche, but it's really niche. People who are excited are really, really excited. Fun. Yeah. Everyone, nobody's just like, oh, I hate sewing LEDs. It's like even if they have to like. Make all these solar LEDs. They're still like I'm having a lot of fun doing right. it. Right. Yeah, because it's new and exciting and it lights up at the end. And nobody says, "Wow, I'm really excited to start my software debugger." Like it, uh, that's uh, not fun. Well, well. I, I also think if you're multi-talented memory. and um, you're really excited about this world of technology we have, if you're running a business, you're doing open source hardware, you have a million different jobs. So even if you hate one of these over here, you could do this one over here and you can keep hopping. Like, yeah. We all do like a million different things per day. Yeah. So like, and sometimes I, I pit them against each other. It's like, oh, I don't feel like doing this. So I'll do this right now. And then yep. like, oh, I, I'm finally tired of this. I'll go back to doing that. I procrastinate is, for doing some things I don't want to do by doing other things that I know will be useful towards yeah. getting to that. Another thing that I think is interesting is, especially in hardware, which I think is a little bit different than software. If you're doing software, you actually have to worry about Google, Apple, or Facebook getting into your business and you can, you can actually yeah. get killed. Mm-hmm. Whereas with hardware, I actually, I actually don't think it's the same way because usually you're doing something so niche yeah. that like Apple's not gonna come in and be like, oh, I'm we're gonna make little geocaching no. LED blinks. Also, they would probably buy it from you or, or would, try to yeah, help you carry it to market. They're not, inter- market they're not interesting because it needs to be a billion dollar product now. Right. right. And so I, one of the things I like is the fact that we're um, able to move so fast because if we sell a thousand of something, that's awesome. If Apple sold a thousand or something, that's terrible. The, it's the end of the world. Yeah. <laughs> they need to send a hundred, you know, sell a hundred million of them. So this is this is a neat time to do stuff. I think so. Anyways. Anyways. Um, someone wants to know: Is anyone making an open source hardware voting machine? There are a few projects that I will oh, write about on uh, Make. I'm a big Make article. I'm gonna say: Here's the things the open source hardware community should consider. One of them is an open source hard, uh, hardware voting machine. A breathalyzer because there's issues with that because people are always saying it's it's, it's locked it's up rigged. it's rigged it's, it's not gonna but but it it should be public I it heard should of that be case, but yeah I yeah there you can't inspect the source code so no one knows if it's accurate uh, or whatever okay. and then top secret I'll tell you the one I personally would like to see we all finally work on Stephen Hawking's um, computer yeah that's right and it will show the world that open source hardware works the world could work together. And make him the ultimate thing. If you look, there's some if previous I was articles. If in Cambridge, I would be really tempted. Yeah, there's but articles about how his stuff is really outdated, and they need help um, trying to get it to all work. And I think that would be a cool project for all of us to work on. So like yeah. maybe later. Like if you ever wonder like what Adafruit's gonna do if we like continue to grow, like we're gonna dedicate a lot of resources to some good things that we think that would show how great it is to to work together. So also there's like medical devices stuff. There's all um, a bunch of biohacking people that are emailing me now because we have a biohacking category. Thank you, yeah. Becky. And they're like, oh, cool, we're thinking about this product. We're thinking about doing this, and we love the idea of open source hardware. It's coming. It's happening. Uh, open source baby warmers, you know, in uh, yeah, you developing countries baby. where you need baby incubators for... Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of good stuff. All right, cool. This okay. is so exciting. Yeah, so next up. We're chatting tonight. Right. Um, well, there's three of us. That's yeah, important. John Janier can talk about this later, but he made this cute, cute little meme thing. You should check it out in his Flickr set. It's that meme like, here's what people think I do, here's what I actually do, and blah, blah, blah. So you should check it out. I want to give a little shout out, John. Uh, speaking of the thing that we just blog talked about. Blog categories. We made two, three new blog categories. Educational mini UAVs. That's like your quad quadcopters and such. 
uh, science for science things and biohacking for more specifically biohacking things. Yeah. More categories for more badge categories. Good work, yeah. Becky. Um, next up, we have a circuit playground update. We're up to version 1.0. Two. This one is this one has regional fixes. stuff. It, there's regional stuff. So like, one of the things that's really interesting about deploying now a popular app, um, you can say that it's popular now, uh, is everyone in every country starts to buy it and use yeah. it. And there's lots of different regional things with decimal co decimals and um, spaces, apostrophes and commas, spaces. Yeah. And so we uh, we decided to let's release fast and often updates. And so we're about to have all the calculators kind of work worldwide in every possible regional format, and that's awesome. And we keep adding features. So we're at 102, and we're going to have a lot more features. And now we, as soon as we wrap that up, then we get to keep adding modules and yeah. modules and modules. We have modules we want to add. We want to get we want to get all the number stuff fixed, yeah. and we want to visit it again. Um, and the uh, fun thing is, if you ever have any type of iOS device and you want to try this out, it goes all the way down to 4.2. We did an update so we could go down to, like, there's an iPod Touch that is kind of end of line, so we wanted to make sure we had stuff for them. And uh, the app is basically free. So it's $2.99, but there's a $2.99 coupon for the Adafruit store. So if you're an Adafruit customer, it's actually free. So, Anyways. Okay, cool. What's going on? Um, let's do some new products. Okay. Do you want to show the code? Last. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sorry? Yeah. I'm going to do the code. Okay, do and the then, code. then we're going to do new products. The code is Frogger. <laughs> 10% off Minikit's Frogger. Okay. Okay. Ribbit. It's new product time. New, new, new. This is new products. There's this is a new lot product of new stuff. Okay. Uh, back in stock. Lull Shields. Okay. Yeah. Well, these are yeah, these are back in stock. We now have White, Lull Shields. Red. Green. Blue. In all colors. And uh, let's uh, go to the overhead. <laughs> go to the overhead. <laughs> it's really bright, but this is the uh, Lull Shield with the Game of Life. And this is the blue. And the blue is just ridiculously bright. It'll, it'll reset in a second. But yeah, you can kind of see. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of LEDs. It's three. It's like 125 LEDs or something. And uh, if you want to learn how to solder, this is a really good practice kit. Right, because it's a lot. By of the time soldering. you're done, you'll be an expert. Also, uh, here's a pro tip for anyone who's uh, making any type of Arduino derivatives. If you ever want to test something, the Lull Shield is an excellent thing to test because it plugs in. It uses all the pins. It uses pretty much all the pins. Yeah. yeah. So if you want to see if your Arduino derivative works, you pop in the Lull Shield. And now you know if it works. It's, a, it's the easiest visual test if yeah. you're uh, arguing. And, it, and it's kind of fun. It's like, it works. Whee! It's bright. Makes a great belt buckle. It does. And other things. Okay, so next up. So we have it all colors now. Yeah. Next up, uh, we have some updated stuff. So this is, oh, no, this is new product. Sorry, well, it's new. updated. This yeah, is new. It's new. It's new. All right. It's similar, the, new. These are the, what did you, what did you say, the flat? flat? These are the flat square digital LEDs. So we had long, thin ones before. Yeah. That are, that, are, like that are like bullet shaped, yeah. and then these are flat. Um, the so you could attach them to stuff. Yeah, they might be they might be easier to attach to certain things. So on the back, there's a little PCB. So the wires go in and out. There's the WS2801 chip, and then um, the eight millimeter LED, and then a, a rubber gasket. So they're still waterproof, um, and you know they're easier to attach to flat things. So maybe if you want to make a matrix, or if you want to attach them to something, so oh. they stick right out. A couple quick board. questions: Is that I squared C, and are they waterproof? Uh, these are waterproof. Um, it's not I2C. It's a it's a special sort of SPI like protocol. Uh, we have an Arduino library and tutorial on these, so you check out the product page and you, it's very easy to understand. Available on GitHub. Available on GitHub. <laughs> yeah. um, I think I use them for the uh, backlighting a headboard instead of the uh, tape because these yeah. can go like yeah. in a weird shape. Yeah, you, you, these are these are more flexible and they're about four inches or three inches apart yeah. um, from one to the other. And uh, you can extend it if you don't mind cutting and, and splicing wires on. And there are five volt running, and there's 25 in a bundle. Yeah. So the so cool. bundle. And then the connectors are broke out a little bit different now. Too. Yeah, this is also updated on the other um, LED pixels. Um, instead of just having the four JST cable, we also had them splice out the power and ground wires. I can show them on the overhead too. Yeah. Although it's, it's pretty. They're beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. It's pretty simple to understand. Oh, Oops, sorry. Overhead. Yeah. Picture in picture. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, we have the four JST connector, so you can chain the, ch the the LEDs together, so you can chain as many as you want. And then um, we have the power and ground. Ground is blue and five volt is red, that are spliced out automatically for you. And so you can chain these together. Um, but also, if you want to connect to power, because if you're doing a large matrix or display, you want to have power come in every 50 pixels or so. 
um, it's really easy to wire up without having to do any soldering. So it's even easier to use. Or you can cut them off if you don't do them. Yes. Very handy. Okay, next up. Um, this is also an updated... We basically updated these to also have the uh, the cables split at the ends for easier power wiring. And these are also beautiful. Do you want to show... Do you have this I don't one? have those because I oh, just okay. But I can, I can uh, turn this on. But I, I was going to turn this... Uh, show this with the... This, um, oh, yeah. We'll do that in a minute. Okay. Uh, next up, by popular request, we have some awesome waterproof uh, cables. Yeah, we have two yeah. waterproof cables. Um, I think those are the, the two that I thought would be the most handy. So I'll show them on the overhead. Okay. So the first up is um, the oh the overhead. Oh sorry. <laughs> sorry, I'm actually multitasking. Yeah. Becky can drive. How about Becky? Me. You don't have Becky. Can no, it's a, it's okay. Okay. Pay attention. I just yeah. Thanks. Uh, I know which one is the overhead. Look, if this was really professional, then we'd have to like get sponsors and like do a pro, but we don't have to do a pro. I'm no, gonna, that makes sense. Like I'm like showing. You know what? Later. You know how good the show is. You can watch it twice. Look at this. Look at this. Little oh. ass, big ass, little ass, big ass, <laughs> mini ass. Anyways, okay. Um, <laughs> anyhow. Should, should, we'll hire someone to do this one day. So uh, this is the waterproof DC connector, and it's a 2.5, uh, sorry, 5.5 outside diameter, 2.1 millimeter inside diameter, or, you know, uh, DC jack. It's kind of a standard DC jack. And you get both sides. And um, over here you can see carefully there's a little clear ring, and that's a gasket. Mm. Um, so when this is plugged in, and unfortunately, I a couple know. quick questions: Are they only 16 inches long? I think uh, the the cables come mm. pre-cut. Yeah. It, but you know, you can always heat shrink something more on them. And I'll then, actually show the other cable. Let me. Can I show the whole thing before we? Yeah. What do you want to do? Well, before we answer questions, because yeah, yeah, it sure. Make sense. And this is the um, four-pin cable, uh, and this has four contacts on the inside, oh. and it's polarized, so you can only plug it in one way. There's a little notch, although nice. it's hard to see, maybe, but there's a notch, and then you can also see the, the white um, gasket here, the O-ring. I'm thinking gardening. These are great for, for gardening, sensing your garden. The Garduino project probably needed this. Needed the, yeah. That was a, that so was a project I saw. When you plug it in, um, the little clear O-ring gets pressed up against the other side, mm -hmm. and then there's a, over, there's a sort of a lock nut, and this presses the gasket, the O-ring gasket, in. Yeah. So when you torque it down, you have a truly waterproof uh, connection. So this is not just weatherproof. It's actually waterproof. It's IP67. Go underwater. So it can go underwater. I mean, it, it's rated for uh, up to um, one meter depth. And after th okay. 30 minutes, it basically it means like it can be underwater for 30 minutes up to one meter depth. But... Uh, you know, you if put you it in your garden and let it get splashed on every day, it'd be fine. Yeah, you could even put it underground yeah. if you wanted to, and it, you know, as long as it, it's just not, it's not designed to be, you know, soaked for a long time. But I think if you're doing a project like, let's say, you're doing a underwater rover or something, this is probably your best bet. Mm -hmm. I mean, for the price, you're not going to get any better water. Mm -hmm. kind of you want to do a couple questions? Now we can do questions. Okay. I just, so, I just want to explain how it worked first. So, uh, is the is the four pin connector NEMA? 2000? I don't think so. I don't know what NEMA 2000 is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's you know, IP67. Why are they only 16 inches when you need longer cables for outside cables? Well, that's the question is how long do you need it? Everyone's going to want to have a different length. Yeah. And so we got these a little bit shorter, um, and then you can extend them just to use heat shrink, and there's, you know, you just heat yeah. shrink over well, it. What matters is the connections that are the connection is what the connection you waterproof the, the other part. ends, yeah. Because if we had... If we had one meter long, people would say we need 10 meters. If we had 10 meters, they'd say, why don't you have 50? And then that's very expensive, and suddenly it's, it's very heavy and, you know, expensive. So yeah. we thought we would get shorter cables, you know, but long enough so that you have some space, and then um, as mm -hmm. necessary, you know, you how, get extended out. How do you waterproof the solder joint, like, if you wanted to waterproof Heat shrink. Heat shrink. The, the solder the solder joint, you use a waterproofing heat yeah. shrink, and uh, that that's really easy to get. That's available at any electronics shop. Yeah. And uh, by the way, like this is our first. Uh, we we got the a, a good uh, set of these. I'll switch yeah. to the rest of the other ones. Um, yeah, these are better photos. So you can really yeah. see the the notch and the O-ring. And we're gonna keep stocking. Basically, as people do cool projects and need and have different needs, um, you know, we spotted these and we're like, hey, this would be a good thing to add. Um, lots Another of people. Another thing is how 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 what I really like about the four-pin connector is um, it can carry a couple amps and it's actually very slim. 
And yeah. another thing is that the, even if you're not using a waterproof connector, um, you just want these, the, the lock that makes it very strong. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about it pulling apart. Good for, I know art installations very, try to make stuff very, like Very, very solid. Proof. Yeah, totally idiot proof in, in my opinion. Do you have PC board sockets for these connectors? Oh, yeah. Nope, these are, these, th 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 that doesn't really make much sense if you think about it. If you, what you want for waterproof connectors is wire to wire. If you have a box, you would use like a waterproof blend or you'd use yeah. like a bulkhead connector, which we might get. It doesn't make sense to have a connector for this on a PCB because a PCB is not going to be waterproof. Yeah, we'll have some cable glands soon. Okay. Cable glands. Yeah, cable glands. Okay. All right, next up. Terminal block. Terminal blocks. Yeah, this Blows is a terminal. It's actually a terminal, terminal bus bar. Bus bar. Bus yeah. bar. Which is something that they have at South by Southwest. It sounds like, oh, okay. <laughs> it sounds like it should be a candy bar. Baby Ruth, uh, terminal, terminal bus, bus bar. Terminal bus bar, yeah. Um, so these are uh, kind of handy little bus bar guys. Uh, and I'll show them on the really overhead. Oh, the photo's really good for them, too. Yeah, sure. Um, so what is a bus bar? A bus bar, is, it's kind of like a terminal block, but they're all connected together. If you look carefully, you can see that these are, this is actually one solid chunk of metal. It's one brass. piece of brass. And they drill out holes, and then they um, drill and tap holes on the top. And so this has seven, I think, like, M4, M6 screws. And it has seven millimeter uh, holes in here. And then you can basically put, like, lots of cables inside. And so this is really good for power distribution, which mm -hmm. is actually something that I hadn't found a really good solution for. It's really easy to get terminal blocks, like we have the Euro-style ones, to connect two wires together. But nothing for like, well, let's say you want to connect a whole bunch of things to one. Yeah. Uh, without soldering, you want to have it be um, a high current connection. We don't have a spec sheet for this yet. We're kind of trying to get the factory to send us one, and like, they're kind of being slow. Mm. Uh, but it is built out of a solid chunk of brass. Very so connected. even though I don't have a spec sheet, it, like 10 amps should be easy. Right. And probably like 30 or 40 amps. Yeah. I mean, this is perfect for robotics. Um, if you're doing a lot of LED projects and you want to do, you know, wiring that's that's distributed, there's it comes with a kind of a nice plastic covering, and uh, you it looks can, like Legos to me. Looks like Lego, and you can bolt it down. There's little bolt yeah. holes, so this is kind of a nice solid terminal block. Okay. Good work, terminal block. Um, next up, we're gonna blow through these really fast. You can just hold up the box Zoom. in a second, but we added snap circuits. Okay. So this, um, this was requested by a lot of folks, so uh, I hope you buy them. These are really big boxes. There's no more yeah, I hope you buy them. Everyone's like, make sure you get snap circuits, um, because we had asked about another product that we now stock. So, anyways, we have the green version, which is one that comes with a crank and it doesn't require There's batteries. Solar stuff, yeah. And then we have junior, and then we have the 500 and one. So we have four uh, different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then XP is like a little microcontroller one that works with Mac, PC, or Linux. So, uh, anyway, cool. we don't need to show the box. I put them out here for no good reason. Yeah. Anyways, the reason why um, uh, people were suggesting we stock those is because um, we now stock little bits. These are open source products from Aya, and uh, she's a good friend of ours, and she is uh, probably one of the most uh, well-known and rising stars in the open source uh, world. She was the open source summit, open hardware summit uh, co-chair. She's a TED fellow. Uh, she has an awesome company called Little Bits. And here are some photos that Becky took of them. Okay. And uh, Becky's going to do a quick demo of them. We're going to go to the overhead? Yeah, we're on the overhead. So, so they come in, it's really nice. The little bit's packaging design is really nice. So this little, like, magnetic closure box is very cool. And then all of the little bits are in their little um, chocolate spots. And there, there's, like, a key that shows what they are that's just, like, a box of chocolates. It makes me want to eat them. And then um, they're really easy to snap together. So this is the power module. You plug it into the battery. Yeah. And then I snapped on, uh, this is a FSR. And that's what they're known for, these little magnetic connectors. It's yeah. uh, really awesome. And they're so open source, so you can make your own modules if you want to. If I squeeze the FSR, the little, um, yeah. what's it called, the bar graph will increase with the pressure of the squeezing. That's cute. And it's just like so, it's so, so easy to unsnap and then like there's the and they can only they they pull around you know they're magnets so you can't really plug it in wrong and here's the um so that's like the potentiometer and the here's just an led and i can make it um brighter or dimmer or dimmer with the potentiometer so yeah. there's like lots of different modules those are really fun to play with yay mm -hmm. go aya yeah mm -hmm. Anyways, we um, have a great uh, product page that Becky made. You can check out the video with uh, with Aya. 
And uh, let's see, if someone wants to know, is the uh, Adafruit Ted, yes, she's, uh, Aya is a Ted fellow, um, is a plastic keyed. It is keyed, and okay. it, yeah, there is there is keyed. There's a little n- nub notch. Okay, thingy. we have to keep zooming along because we're actually running out of time tonight. Yeah. Okay, next up. Um, and by the way, uh, if you guys are really into open source hardware and you want to see an open source uh, product for kids, um, support Aya and this product. Um, it's version 0.2. Um, you could do lots of things with your money, but if you want to see open source hardware succeed and see this as a product that every school could possibly get, like, um, support it. And little uh, little kids can use these. Like I'm gonna get them for my like six and seven year old nephew. Uh, I have a um, blog post going up. Like five year olds are able to use electronics for this yeah. stuff. So um, please. Uh, I'll be taking this demo unit. Please. Consider it. <laughs> okay. Next up. Um, Everybody really likes these. These are um, one of our most popular products that uh, we put in the store. We almost sold out of these uh, instantly. Yeah, let's do uh, the big screen. So let's do the big Becky screen. and I can oh, demo okay. this. Yeah. So I'll show that in, in, in detail, but to start, um, I wanted to show this is the slip ring, and I'll show it in detail. But basically, it's something that, <laughs> um, you know, I have a digital signal going here, and it's still running. Um, perfectly fine, even though I'm, I'm twisting the slip ring, and it can go around, whoop, except when I short something. Um, Start it over. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can basically twist um, a slip ring around, and I'm going to show on the overhead how they work. Okay. It's very cool. Since we, we chopped it. Yeah, independent. I was thinking, like, a lot of people do these interactive dancing projects where they want, like, you want their Maximus P patch controlled by like the pressure sensors in their socks yeah. and their bend sensors on their elbows, and yeah. they're tethered to whatever they're working with, or they yeah. have to work out some Bluetooth thing. But it's hard to be tethered because you want to dance and twist around. Well, this thing like spins and still maintains the connection, so your wires, uh, your wire harness doesn't get all tangled. Yeah. So basically, inside, so this is the the twist part, and we basically just chopped it in half. And um, inside is, this is sort of the, I guess the stator, I don't know. Um, and it's got little bearings. So there's two, like, mini bearings. And there's little uh, copper uh, grooves. And each groove is a different wire connection. So there's six wires and there's six grooves. And then the tough, tough, tough that part that's tough to see is there's little fingers in here. You can barely see them, maybe. They're little wire fingers. And so when this is in place, the fingers... Um, press up against the uh, copper ring and they're gold plated and so they maintain connection and this is just machined to be like perfectly round and then on the other side there's another set of fingers so you have two you have two fingers basically grabbing the ring so as it rotates it's like a brush it maintains connection at all times yeah we took a hacksaw to cut this open by the way yeah so that's it so I'll, I'll show it um, yeah you I'll want to show it in action um, well I'll just disconnect and show it on the overhead you don't even yeah. need to disconnect it you can just so a couple quick oh. questions. Um, oh, is it over here? Yeah, you want to go there? Oh, yeah, I want to show. I want to show the big, because this has um, it has a flange on it. You can cut the flange off. Flange. But it's meant to uh, so you can you know attach this and then this rotates freely. So it can rotate basically forever and it can pass like two amps, which is uh, pretty impressive. I was telling my friend about this earlier and she thought immediately it would be fun to make a silly hat, like a little yeah. like yeah. fascinator, with, like a little spinny LED thing. It's really good for like robotics. Um, I thought it'd be cool for like a POV project with something with spinning. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna try to get uh, the toroidal, toroidal, yeah, just okay. go Okay, well. some quick questions. Is there a max RPM? Do we know? Yes, there is. Check the spec sheets. Okay. Uh, it's like Do you think the slip ring would pass video? It should, pass, it should pass anything. It's, Six it's, wires. Uh, it's just a connection. Yeah. I don't see why it wouldn't be able to pass. Do they have a wear spec? There's no wear spec. I don't know. These, these are not it's really bearing. expensive slip rings. Yeah. So, yeah, you uh, could spend a lot of money on one. Yeah, this is not a $500 slip ring. It's a $20 slip ring. So yeah. don't expect it to last, you know, a decade or more. But These wires, what do you think, hobby. like, um, the max current is on the wire that gauge? Like, it's... It's well, the, the 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 current. Well, they're not meant to. These are just for the connection. They're not really meant to be like the current passing. I think they're like. I think I I put them up to like 26 gauge, but it's it's rated for two amps per connection. Okay. So that's a lot. Um, I mean, I wouldn't pass two amps times six wires continuously for hours, but you know, if if you're doing a project and you need to spike power, that's mm-hmm. probably certainly fine. Okay. Um, and kind of the, the star of the show, besides um, Lady Ada and Becky, is our new product. Uh, this is I'm really excited about this one. This is uh, one of my favorite new products that we added to the store. 
This is, uh, well, I'm going to spoil it. Why don't you tell everybody what it is? Okay. It's a little GPS breakout that's breadboard friendly. Um, we wanted to have a GPS that kind of had everything we wanted in the GPS at a very fair price. Um, we had, um, oh, here. I'll show it off here. It's blinking and also um, have it in the bag. We wanted to have a small, lightweight GPS module, and we wanted to have mounting holes with it. We wanted to be breadboard friendly. And we liked the MediaTek chipset, which has 10 hertz updates. And we wanted it to be 5 volt friendly, so you could use it with an Arduino, and you wouldn't have to worry about you know, plugging in three, uh, 5 volts or 3 volts and, and messing it up. Uh, we wanted to have an indicator light, so you can see this has a nice bright indicator light. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to have the ability to add um, a coin cell on the back, so it comes with a little coin cell holder, and you can put a standard CR1220 um, coin battery in the back and so you can use the real time clock or you can leave it off if you want something small and lightweight. Um, it has a uh, fixed output so you can do that. It has enable input so you can control whether the GPS is on or off to save power uh, using any digital pin. It's, it's, a, it's a separate um, digital enable pin. Uh, you can uh, put 5 volts in and it will regulate it down to 3.3 so it's safe to use. It's a pretty low power. It's like 40 milliamps or less, which is really good. And it's very high sensitivity. This is the same GPS module that was um, suggested to me by Chris Anderson uh, from 3D Robotics slash DIY Drones. I said, hey, you know, those are really adorable little GPS modules. They're so cute and small, but like, they're so small. Do they actually do a really good job? And he said, actually, they're the best. He said he really liked them for the size and the weight. Um, they work fantastically well. He said he was really, really happy with it. So um, I was like, excellent, that's great. And uh, we've tried these out, and I like them. I, I think this is a really good little GPS, and, and because we're getting the module and, and picking and placing it here, we can have it less than $40. So, mm -hmm. you know, and hopefully as we buy more GPSs, we can even push the price lower. I'd, I'd really love to have a GPS module for 30 bucks or less. Yeah. Okay. A few fast questions on this. Is yeah. the GPS breakout board monochrome clock compatible? Um, I mean, the monochrome code doesn't have GPS built in, but it spits out NMEA data, which is the standard GPS data. So anything that's expecting standard GPS data, um, this can do it. This spits out at 9600 baud by default, um, not 4800, which is a little bit more common for older GPS modules, but you can adjust that. Okay. Uh, next mm -hmm. up, is it a passive or active antenna and power so, consumption? Uh, it draws about 37 milliamps while... Um, Tracking. I, I don't remember off the top of my head actually, but you can you can check in the product page. Okay. Um, it has a standard on um, patch antenna. This little uh, thing is the. Okay. So also, can you have an external antenna with these? These are not meant to have external antenna. We are okay. thinking about having a version that has external antenna, but a lot of people honestly want to have it all in one. So. Is it 66 channel? Yes. It has 66 channels. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, next up, what is the sleep current consumption? Check that. Check the spec sheet of the data okay. sheet. It's very low. Uh, high altitude cutoff. This does not have high altitude capability, but um, I am uh, getting MediaTek to send me um, GPSs that have it disabled. Unfortunately, I can't test it because we can't do high altitude balloons here in Manhattan. <laughs> um, I'd love yeah. to, but I really I can't go to jail quite it's yet. Going on a field trip. Yeah. Um, but trip as soon trip. as we as soon as we get them in, um, we'll find someone who has a high altitude project, and, and they said. We, they can turn off the high altitude cutoff as long as they keep the high speed cutoff. I said, well, we don't really do high yeah. speed. You know, nobody really does high speed projects. How, so much, we, yeah. make How much amperage does it consume? Uh, again, it's about 30, 40 milliamps or so. Check the spec sheet if okay. you need details. Uh, what's the hardware interface? UART. It's a NMEA TTL UART. Great. And uh, maybe someone could post a link to the product in the store if I can't yeah. get to it by now. There's a lot of documentation right. for it. Yeah, we have a ton so, of documentation. Most of the questions are in yeah, the product page. Like how many channels and what's the sensitivity and the range and does it support this and support that. Yeah. But can you tell me how awesome is it? Yeah. It's very awesome. I actually really <laughs> like this. And we'll be discontinuing some of the other GPS modules as, in, favor, as, of in favor of this one. And then um, there's yeah. going to be another revision of this, hopefully, which is even awesomer. And then, of course, that's external antenna. So I'd like to, I, I like these uh, modules because, yeah, honestly, they're. Less expensive, more sensitive, lower power. I mean, they basically have everything you want Smaller, in a GPS module. Yeah. And then, and oddly enough, I, I couldn't find any other uh, GPS modules that were like breadboard compatible. You can just plug them into a perf board, or you can solder wires to them. So I thought that was really nice. Yeah, I'll tell you one of the problems because I mm -hmm. I'm the front end of like customer support is 
there's so many confusing confusing things out there, and everyone is kind of overcharging people, and they have like 50 different GPS modules, and no one actually can get the stuff to work, and it's wrong. Like it's really confusing. So I'm glad there's a that lot of there's a lot of GPS chipsets out there, and all of them are slightly different. Yeah. So yeah, I, I would like to settle in on like the MediaTek chipset and be done with it. GPS yeah. to end all GPSs. Yeah. yeah. And just and just have that. And it's so tiny. It could even be Flora compatible. Well, you can totally just put that in a, like, anything, yeah. in a coat, in a jacket, in a shirt, in your yeah. pants, on your belt. Uh, will this work box. with the level transistor, uh, translator you sell? Sorry, what? Will this work with the level... You do not need a level translator. It's got a uh, level translation built in. That's right. It's five Even volt compatible. better. Five volt yeah. compatible out of the box. All the pins okay. are five volt compatible, except for the battery pin. Will the high altitude version have pulse per second? I don't know what that means. Um, you know what that means. We don't know yet. We're still... We're still investigating. Okay. On an awesome scale of 1 to 10, what would you consider this? This is like a solid 10. Solid 10? Oh. Yeah. Okay, I'd say 9.5. Here's what about the pulse per 9. second. I'm really excited 9, about this. 9 point, I am, but at 9.5. 9. Yeah, 9.5. What's 5. a 10 then? You can, you can never have 10, because then it's only downhill after that. The thing is, the pulse plus, per second 9. is it's, very, it's hard to use the pulse per second, and, and we haven't really seen a lot of people use it, so that's why... I don't know if I'm going to be like, because there's a lot of trade-offs in what modules you get, whether you have that built in or not. This one does not have pulse per second, unfortunately. Okay. Um, so that's it. We got through it. Whew. Okay. Did you want to try to do a really quick, it's not out yet? Yeah, I can show it. Okay. Super we're going to do a really quick nine out. We might, we're going to run a couple Just seconds like, over. show it and then hide yeah, it. Yeah, we'll come. We'll run a couple minutes over. It's okay. All right, so this is, uh, you can't have any questions about it. It's not out yet. Don't ask. Um, this is super exciting, though. This yeah. is one of the coolest things that you're working on. I like it. It's our PN532 NFC RFID chip on an Arduino. Is this shield. a K-Town project? This is a K-Town project. You can tell because yeah. it's awesome. It's a 10. <laughs> you can tell by the layout that's Kevin Town. Yeah, so you got to, it looks so like tidy and, and all. I mean, yeah. like, your, your circuits are really tidy too, but like I don't know. It's it has really this, like, tidy. K-Town feel to it. They are tidier. Um, yeah, they've got the PN532 NFC RFID chip. Uh, it runs over I2C, so it only needs two pins, and then an IRQ pin if you want to not have to wait around for the chip. Uh, the little proto area because we had to extend it. And then this goes past the Arduino because the uh, yeah, the antenna had to go past the Arduino to get the, the four inch range. So we have four inch, which That's is like the great. maximum the maximum like range that they say that NFC or RFID can do. Yeah. It can do it. Um, we did a really, really great job here. It's nice. And, and does it need to be uh, off the Arduino so that it can get clear signal with the antenna? Because yeah, interferes you, you with can't antenna? have stuff underneath, and so to to make sure of that, we we put it off on on the side. Mm -hmm. You also want to have the full size antenna, and we have uh, mounting poles too, so you can That's mount cool. this onto something. It's really beautiful. Go K Town. Go K Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, analog stuff, digital stuff. And it's also your know, 5 compatible. We make sure it's all easy to use. You can use it with I C or S P I. We wrote code to make it all super happy. And it's R3 compatible, so you can plug it into a Mega R3 and it uses the I2C pins that are on oh, the line. They're now nice. split off, yeah. So that's it. All right, I'm going to turn it over. So mm. Kind of boring. Know, it's kind of boring. There's something about K-Town circuits that I like. The, yeah. Yeah. The way they're the all squished. Rock. They're squished really tiny together. I actually do the squishing. He actually usually makes them a little bit bigger, and I'm like, I gotta squish it! <laughs> I like the something squisher. Something about the way you work together is good. We work together really good. Good squish. work. Squish. That's our, it's not out yet. PCBs are sent for, but not yet. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We'll have them soon. Mm -hmm. And then we'll have some fun projects. Okay. All right. Um, we'll do just a, 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 just a quick round of Ask an Engineer questions, general questions. We're in it. Yeah, there's, tw there's yeah, four of us now. There's six of us. We're echo, 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 echo. Yeah, I know. I, get a, I have a way to do that so it doesn't do that anymore. Anyways. Why don't you pick you on the camera? Hey, why don't you like do you want to run the camera next time? Camera I'll next take time. a break next time. I actually that might be happy. Seriously, yeah. you were like running. You can catch all the questions, questions that way. I'm trying to do. Yeah, I'm trying to. Do you, you can also set up a camera filter to highlight yeah. the questions. Okay, about. quick. I'm designing a <laughs> it's from scratch my own quadcopter. Where should I post my build log? Um, Instructables, really great. Uh, make Project. projects. Yeah. Also, starting your own site and having Flickr is fine. Flickr yeah, is great for things. stuff like that. Flickr whatever. Is really good for stuff my like answer is whatever doesn't stop you from moving forward with the project. Whatever's easiest, whatever's easiest. Yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. For you, try a bunch of different things. Guess Probably the blog different. on the Adafruit site and post it there. I don't know. It's possibly not the easiest. Okay, is there going to be an open uh, SCAD badge? Uh, maybe. I have to. I'll try to contact them. I got the KiCad folks, the um, Eagle folks. I mean, I got, I got a few. I, I got to say that. I got the Gita folks. I feel like 
SCAD and like it's the same as Savannah College of Art and Design. It's it's just it sounds like scab. <laughs> it sounds like scab to me. Scab, you okay. know, which is. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Maybe they have a nice logo. I don't know. Becky, do you know any Power Over Velcro projects? Power Over Velcro. I haven't seen a lot of Power Over Velcro, but you can use the conductive Velcro is pretty cool, and it makes like a lo- a pretty solid silver contact. So I don't see why you couldn't run Power Over it. How did you get your advisor to let you build a cell phone jammer? Um, if you if you Google that by advisor, you'll find out real fast. It's, okay. <laughs> it's the power of his chest hair. Yeah. Next up. <laughs> Um, where's the code for the Internet of Things printer? On GitHub, the GitHub button at the bottom of the site. And it's also in the product page. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and also the tutorial it's definitely page. definitely on GitHub. Okay. Um, how can I get a 3 millimeter RGB LED? I don't know of any 3 millimeter RGB okay. LEDs. When are our sewable kits coming out? Soon? Very soon? What, once they're good and ready. Yeah. Um, how can I scrape mm-hmm. Twitter with processing? There's probably like someone um, who's code out there. There's yeah. code out there for you, know, you already. There's first off this code for you. Use out there. the Google and find it. Look on GitHub. Also, if you look at the Internet of Things printer code, yeah. um, you know it connects to JSON, the, the the search API, and it's just like it's just parsable. It's pretty easy to parse. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are your thoughts on that new thermal LED that we post on our blog? We have to look at that. Uh, we want to look at the uh, research that they did on that before we think of things for it because it was an interesting post. Um, I need a PWM transistor NPN. Do I need a pull-up resistor on gate when using the transistor as a switch? Um, you should have a pull-up or pull-down resistor on a FET because they float. Okay. The gates float. Uh, for power circuit done uh, SMD, can you use large size ceramic caps in place of the electrolytics? Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, what type of light source LED laser would you recommend for making a hologram tube device? Um, you need a, a single... Uh, single frequency waveform, so like any laser, like even a red laser will work fine. Okay. What is uh, a good place to get some fiber optic strands? I want to give Robot Bird and Mohawk. Uh, what's the best way to attach the LEDs to the strands? That's actually a tough question. I'm not sure. I've been actually trying to figure that um, out if there's a good way to do it. Look for uh, uh, fiber optic Mohawk. Someone made one. I think they heat shrink the LEDs around Yeah, the... You can, but it's yeah. just not It's not as good as if there was a fitting. So yeah. that's why I'm trying to figure out if there's a way to get a fitting. Okay. Will we ever carry a 125 kilohertz RFID board for our RD cards? My fare is 13 point. Yeah. I think I decided um, basically I was going to stick with 13.56 megahertz, which is what my fare and, and like Philica and all those other ones use. Um, first off, because it's also the NFC frequency, and so it's really easy to, you know, it's, it's. I'd rather have one board that does RFID and NFC than have um, multiple confusing RFID than like, oh, does it work with this, does it work with that? Um, you know, we have really good range on our RFID NFC reader writer. I just thought like just sticking with one thing would probably be the best. Um, it's also much more handy because, for example, with the 13.56, you know, as more phones get NFC, it, it's going to become more useful. Um, next up, uh, mm-hmm. can I make a 3 millimeter SMD RGB LED into a through hole package? Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. I mean, um, it's getting really complicated. I don't know yeah. what this question is. Uh, next up, have we ever made a printed version of a store catalog? There's a PDF that you can download and print yourself. Um, are you ever going to do any PIC32 products? We have the. Uh, we don't have a pick 32. Oh, the, the Pinguino is probably the, is a pick the, 32. The Pinguino is, and we mm, stocked them yeah. in the store. Mm-hmm. Um, I put that in the store, that's why I remember we had that. Uh, Thank you. I think the battery pack time. we are done with questions. Okay, whew, that was a lightning round. Thank you. Oh, has they different done their own TED Talk? No. Um, we do one every week. It's called Ask Engine. You're watching it. Um, we'll just... Uh, have to find someone named Ted, I guess. Okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to do a trivia question. It's going to be fast. Oops. Is there something? What? Okay. Nothing. Trivia Nothing. question. Okay. It's trivia question time. Trivia question time. Yeah, before I do trivia question, don't forget, Code Frogger, use it. Buy some stuff so we can keep doing this. You can get 10% off these show. awesome little GPS modules, which is also, by the way, the prize yeah. today. Yeah. Okay, so the rules are, we have to repeat the rules because when we don't repeat the rules, people break them. If you want something already, just, like, don't answer, okay? Because, like, that's not fair. We want yeah. everyone to win a prize. So even though, you know, there's a lot of people who won prizes and you know the answer is just, like, go get a coffee or something or a hot chalky or something or <laughs> whatever. Um, the first person who uh, posts the um, correct answer with spelling and all that good stuff 
and then we see in our little chatty thing yeah. is the winner. What's and the prize? The prize is a GPS module. The prize is a GPS module. Yeah, a little breakout. This is really great. You can use it for anything. Everyone can use this. It's a great GPS module. Okay. Um, here's the, uh, the trivia question. Uh, first person to type the chipset used for this GPS gets one. Type it in the chat. The correct part number. Yeah. Do, do, do. Okay, guess who got it? Rich Howley. Good work, Rich Howley. Rich you Howley. got your MediaTek chipset. It's the MTK3329. Good work. Email support at Adafruit.com. He obviously wants this GPS module. He wants he's it. Like, he he's ready. like reading the spec sheet. He's like, man, eh, that's a nice GPS yeah. module. Someone who won a thermal printer a few weeks back is here. Great. See, everyone wins something. I just want to make sure everyone gets to win something. Yeah. Wait, where's, where's the... No, not about the other one. Oh. Yeah. It's time for a cat. <laughs> so uh, uh, let me do some... We've got some cat hijinks going on here. Yeah. Um, if you want to get 10% off the GPS, you just have to use the code FROGGER. FROGGER. On checkout. So add it to your cart, and then when you get a chance to add the coupon code at the end, add Frogger, you'll get 10% off. Yeah. What I like about this GPS module is how light it is. It's yeah, uh, someone who wants to know that massive pile of mail is uh, not even a day's worth. It's just a few hours. We're doing a lot of business lately. There's a lot of mail going out. Good work. And it's time for a cat. You found the cat. Found him. Found him. Yeah. Found it. Yeah. My cat's a girl, so I'm. Oh, can default. I have him for a second? I usually put him in front of the camera. Yeah, the camera. He's yeah. grabbed onto my dress pretty hard. Yeah. Watch out, he's nervous. He like, must be. He's like, hello, nice lady. Right. Who are you, nice lady? <laughs> yeah, he right. doesn't know you as well as he knows us. No. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Cat. There he is. Meow, meow, meow. meow, meow he communicates meow. with other engineering cats out there. Which, by the way, Becky. How many cats did you add recently to the... I don't know, the, at least seven or eight. The Cats of Engineering page. Yeah, it's really fun. I like that my job is to update a website <laughs> with pictures of cats and electronics together. <laughs> Phil's like, this is your task. I'm like, okay, great. Yeah. Pictures of cats. <laughs> like MOSFET with oscilloscopes. You can yeah. submit your own cat picture, and then I'll have more cats to update. The page is really long now. On my, on my new internet connection at home, it takes a pretty long time to load. Yeah. The internet may have been uh, invented because we all have the cat parasite, and the cat parasite well, uses the inter internet to ca communicate with itself. So Edison has that cat boxing video from 1897 yeah. or something. Yeah. And like he must have had um, whatever it's called, the cat virus. Toxo. Yeah. Toxoplasmosis, because Toxo like he made that like he invented you know movies to film to boxing distribute, cats. Distribute cat videos. Yeah. So the internet was. Yeah, only a hundred years later, the true purpose is revealed. Yeah, cat so videos. if you want to um, look at the Cats of Engineering page, just go to the Adafruit site and on the go to the blog, and on the right-hand side, there's um, Cats of Engineering. I'm going to post it a link here. And um, it's, the, it's the best um, collection of Cats of Engineering. It's also the only collection. <laughs> Turns out... The internet's been around what? for a while, and, and no one collected cats of engineering in one place. Is there so. a picture of MOSFET on the pick and place? Yes, there's a pic one? There's one picture of MOSFET. He made a, a small appearance. It's um, a lot of negotiations with him. His agent is kind of hard to deal with, and so um, the royalties are a little bit. The royalties insane. are hard. He's MOSFET. Uh, yeah. I mean, his appearance on on Ask an Engineer is trying to put you out of business. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> meow, 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 meow. That's why we have to get the most out of him. <laughs> yeah. Her appearance. That's why he can only appear for a short time at the end of the show. Yeah. Yes. He has this rider where all the pieces of cat food, they have to be a certain color, they have to, they, they can't say... It, it's, it has to be it, organic. The organic cat food. No brown M&Ms. No brown M&Ms. Yeah. He has to have a clean litter box. Yeah. Uh, someone wants to know if it, it would be okay if I did dogs of engineering. Absolutely. We're not going to do dogs of engineering. We did cats of engineering. Someone else has to do this. All right. It's okay. 11 10. Let's It's 11 10. Thank you I so much, sleep. George, for doing 10 minutes extra. A little overtime tonight. And then uh, thanks to everybody showing up. Friends of ours. That was super fun. That was good. We we'll had see, quite an important we'll show. We'll see everybody um, next I've been, week. I've been sitting here for two hours, so I'm going to yeah. go and, to sleep. Uh, <laughs> we'll see all the videos. Okay. Here is your moment of Zener.